Welcome back everybody, this is Jason Seacrest and we are going to go through another step-by-step -step Adobe Illustrator tutorial. Alright, so what we're going to do on this next step is we're actually going to be applying our brushes and then we're actually going to do a little bit of just brushes 101 just before we even get started. Now yours is potentially going to look different than mine. So whenever we go off of a drawing, hopefully you have started from the photo, you've done your own drawing. And that entire idea is so you spend more time with your subject matter. So now when we come back into our brushes, it's going to get fairly overwhelming. And so you are kind of prepping for that as you are doing your little trace. So when we're ever doing a little brushes 101 here, I want your eyeballs to see what makes the most amount of sense first. So if I am just saying, well, where are my little floaters? Those are usually the easy ones. So if I'm saying some of these are all going to be tapered, those are the ones that my eyeballs typically go to first. I can make the most sense of them. All of these are going to be tapered. And then if I'm looking just down at my cone, pretty much everything going towards the center here, this is going to be where, kind of where the lightest part is going to be. Everything on this side is actually going to be kind of like this will actually be the, the value side of it. So this is all value over here. So I actually want this side to be kind of reading a little bit darker. So that's a good signal that that's going to be a lot of my dark and or the fat parts of the line. And then if I'm just kind of looking at each one, I want you to kind of start playing a little game of what's touching. So here's the hard one. Notice that we have lots of things touching. We have lots of things that are kind of overlapping with each other. So I want you to kind of figure out what is going to be in front and then what is going to get sort of hacked out. And the more you can just kind of mentally prep for it, the better. Now, some of these are actually get a little bit confusing. So notice if we're just looking on this left-hand side over here is I could do this in multiple different ways. I can have this actually floating and or I could do a little bit more of an abrupt corner. So it just depends on how I want to prep for it uh, or prep for my brushes. Kind of mental checklist. You don't, you don't actually have to put the X's down, but we're just kind of, kind of giving yourself something to look for and a little bit of a dialogue. So notice that I'm just talking out loud for you. I want you to do the same thing since you probably had a different looking drawing than me. And then all we are gonna do is we are going to, or all of the little brushes. Now what we wanna do is actually install our brushes. So if you have not done so already, let's just do that so we can have a little bit more fun together, is on the brushes panel. If you don't see it, just always remember that right hand side is always under window. Just drop down to brushes. And then if I do a nice little kind of hover down at the bottom left, this is our brush library. Now I can either go to user define in our garden getting started guide. We actually went through how to install all of them. It takes about five minutes. You just open them all up and then you just actually save all of them uh, in your library. And it's actually very, very quick. And then all you want to do, if you don't have that, is just do our little download. Click on desktop. Click on your brushes. And then you can click on any of the brush sets. So let's say I want to do a little rough and or jittery. Those are kind of fun ones. Click on open. And then it'll actually pop up. So now you've got it hanging out where you want. And then you can actually start to come through and use it. So I believe I use rough ink on this one. Now, what we want to do is actually spend a little bit more time on the editing. So I am just going to duplicate this one. Let's just see if I've already done that. So notice that this is still live. That's the one I always want to keep. So I'm going to touch this little button right over here. That's just select everything on that layer. I'm going to go object. I'm going to hit expand. Now, this one does have roughen, so it is going to give you a whole lot more anchor points. You can just choose any of the other brushes if you wanted something cleaner. And then we can come in and we can actually start the editing process. Now, I'm not going to do the whole editing one. I just want to kind of give you guys some different options. And I want you to do a little bit of a thought process. So the first one is if I click on something, if I just click on my eraser tool, that is shift E, I can just come in and I can just hide it in other strokes. So this whole move is just select on the one that you want. And then you're really trying to just see what makes sense to you. So yours, you can have, a, you might have busier, yours might be cleaner. It is just one at a time. And it's just really, man, it's pretty manageable no matter what your experience level is. And notice that I'm just hiding it. And I just need to remember to grab everything first. So that move, one at a time, try and find something that makes the most amount of sense. You will notice that you've got some pretty dumb corners that are pretty obnoxious. The longer you went, the more obnoxious they are and the easier they are to spot. So if you made them super long, now all you have to do is come in 
and then erase it, and then that's it. So you, that's a pretty easy process. Now I'm gonna do another one. So for those of you that are kind of looking for the, the other mode, is now I can come in, I'm just grabbing, I'm gonna actually do sh shape builder, hold down my alt option, and then I can do it kind of pointing and clicking. Now I'm, I'm showing off a little bit. So I want you to we'll do this slow so you can follow along. So I'm just grabbing the ones I want. You don't have to grab everything. So if it doesn't make sense to you at the time, don't try and grab everything all at once. I can now come over to Shape Builder. Here's my Shape Builder. Potentially, most of you, if you've gone through any of our tutorials, we've been using Live Paint literally like every single time. <laughs> so you should be pretty familiar with it. So just click on Shape Builder. I'm gonna double click. I don't like doing anything with the fills and the highlights, so you can turn those off. Just hold down your Alt option, and then you are clicking and or dragging. And that's it. Now I do wanna point this out. If I just click on my black arrow and deselect, that would be the move. And then everything is just hiding in each other. Now the next little move is some of you might like the idea of a different type of corner. So if I go long, depending on what type of brush I have and or which, just what type of corner I like, I can kind of prep into that and I can just give me those options. So you will kind of see your little chicken foot down at the bottom here that if I say, well, I definitely know I want this one and then that one, and then I can just kind of hit those first and then that one is pretty well established. This one just needs to hide within those two. And then I've got my, my corner kind of well established. So I'll, let's do some of these. I think you guys are going to be kind of upset if we don't do the bottom together. So let's do the bottom together. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to click on sh the... I'm just going to do our shape builder. So shift S. Take that back. Shift M for you. I'm just going to click there, click there. And then notice that it is clicking. Let me just do my little space bar. I have to do a little bit of a game every single time, so I'm trying to show you the, the full process, is if I know that this is all gonna get deleted, I just have to kind of prep for that. So I just have to kind of look mentally, like, hey, what's the one that I want in front? What's gonna be the holding shape? So notice the last one I did right here. So that's the one, that's the start of the diaper. So if I do my little, hold on your Alt option, all I'm doing is finding the line that makes sense. So here's my little line. And then I'm just clicking on anything else that's overlapped. And that's it. Now, if you see anything else that just doesn't make sense and you want to just get rid of it, you're still just playing kind of hiding everything in there. Now let's get rid of everything that's on the inside. Now there's a few of you that will notice that it does get pretty overwhelming. Your eyeballs are falling out of your head. So that's why I'm trying to do a little bit more of the process of, well, what's in front? Since yours is going to be a little bit different than mine, I just want you to look down at your screen. Like I want all of the, this the first initial diaper or the second diaper or napkin, depends on how not much fun you want to have today. And then we can have this nice and clean. Same thing, let me just grab See if we can do it with those. I think we can do it. So I'm gonna grab my shape builder. I just wanna get rid of this one. Notice that it's just locking into the next path. So there's a path, there's a path in the other one. It's just going straight into it. And then that's about it. So that's it, you can do yours. I'm, I've already done mine, so I'm gonna skip down to the next one. Yours is gonna look different than mine anyway. And so I have mine nice and clean. So let's just go control zero. I am going to take my magic one. I'm just gonna double check. So these are all still kind of separate. So I usually like to unite right now. So I'm just in my pathfinder and I can hit it with unite. So that's just gonna grab everything. Now I am gonna just come up to object. Now if I drop down to where it says our live paint, if I click on make, today I'm not gonna click on this. I just want you to kind of see the process. If I just come over to my live paint bucket, just notice that it will say, hey, do you wanna make this a live paint group? And then all you have to do is click, but usually I'll say, just pick the color that you want. And then you're off to the races. So you really don't have to do that extra little step. I usually do it on YouTube, just so it, there's an extra step that people can actually see. Otherwise it, it goes a little rapid fire fast. So I'm just clicking. No, notice I've got those little swatches. I don't know if you can even see it. So I've got my little swatches. And so all I have to do is my arrow keys 
I'm just toggling between the colors. I'm just waiting for it to highlight. Notice that I've got that little blue. Potentially we can turn that off. So like, do you want the highlight on and or off? You can turn that on. I usually like having it on. I mean, that's probably highly distracting on the video, but other than that, I like letting, like, hey, I'm still here cursor wise. And so like, I don't do an oops and then I have to undo it every time. So I do kind of like that. Now, every time you finish your live paint, notice that if I click on it with my black arrow, you'll get those asterisks. So depending on where you're at in your process, this will be a giant troubleshooting for those next steps. So for those of you that are hanging out with me online, we're gonna do our coloring, we're gonna do our values, we're gonna do things like that. So you just wanna make sure that you've clicked expand, ungroup, and then potentially you're gonna keep on clicking ungroup. So notice I keep deselecting until I can just come back and then grab one at a time. So notice that big kind of process that we just went through, that was all troubleshooting. So like those were three major things as people are moving into values, as we start going into effects and we start having a little bit more fun, we wanna just double check that there's all those little things that had to happen. One, we had to finish, we had to hit expand, we had to ungroup, there was an extra little hidden ungroup, sometimes it's like three times, and then you can actually go through, and then we can go from there. But other than that, for those of you that are hanging out on the website, thanks for hanging out, and I will see you guys on the next tutorial.